Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Daryl Brooks Saga. On today's episode, we're gonna start day 12 of the trial, and we're gonna continue with Daryl Brooks' defense. De defense. <laughs> because uh, he's gonna continue to call a witness, he's gonna continue to go nowhere, I am sure. I don't, I'm not sure who is the one that he interviews today, but we're gonna find out. Alright, first of all, Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for liking the video. Thank you guys for watching. Above, above all, what I wanted to guys, uh, what, what I wanted to tell you guys is that um, since today is the season, um, I'm gonna start uh, giving back, and then the only way that I can really give back to you guys is to make more videos. So, if you guys see um, another video pop out in the afternoon. That's the reason why. I, I'm not sure when I'm gonna start, when I'm gonna do them, but be sure that you're gonna see more videos this week. All right, without further ado, let's go right into the video. Good morning, Judge. Two offer Leslie Basie and Zach Wachow appearing for the state. State your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments, and I would like to make a reservation of all my rights at this time. All right. All right, thank you. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing street clothes, specifically a suit and tie, and he is wearing a mask. And I do not consent to being called that name for the record. <laughs> Noted. He's starting with all the classics. His, his, uh, his speech at the beginning, which he has to read. I mean, we're 11 days into this, and he still has to read the thing out of the paper. I would have memorized it by now, but whatever. And also that I don't consent to being called that name. All right, so Mr. Brooks called a witness yesterday. There was an objection. I sustained it, but he also... Uh, orally moved to dismiss and I indicated I would take that up outside the presence of the jury. I didn't do that yesterday so I just want to put on the record that I'm denying the motion without any uh, further consideration or uh, discussion by the parties. Um, he listed two reasons. One was the uh, it had to do when he called the state of Wisconsin as a witness for failing to appear and then for failing to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Um, there's no uh, legal basis for those motions in law or in fact, uh, and so that's why I'm denying them on the record today. I'm not asking for any further commentary well, or p statements object, on the issue. I object to that. And um, I he still doesn't get that you cannot object to rulings. You can object to questions, but that's not what an objection is. She, well, what she says is what it is. I That's intend it. to have you call uh, the next witness. I just want to confirm with the state um, who is here this morning. I object to that ruling, Your Honor. I like Noted for the record. Present, like <coughs> Present this morning, Your Honor. I would like legal finding effect. Tonight. Your Honor, consistent with the court's instruction yesterday afternoon, we have President Douglas Kohler, Detective Steve Guth, and Erica Patterson are here now and available. All right, so this episode is the one with Good and Erica. All right, that's going to be fun. All right, I expect you to call those first three before we get to any other person, not whatever order you want among the three, but uh, those will be the three people called. I want to uh, state for the record that uh, I intend to appeal that judicial decision made about the motion to dismiss. Notice for appeal the record, it, my guy. Right, you you do you. Well, actually. We did address subject matter jurisdiction. It still has yet to be proven for the record. And I wanted to address the fact that with this, um, is it Kohler? Is that how you pronounce the name? Kohler? We're going to continue with the witnesses. I, I address subject matter jurisdiction repeatedly. There's a written decision. I stand behind it. You have three witnesses that you subpoenaed. The state made arrangements for them to be here. Whatever order you want to call them in this morning is fine, but those three are here. That's what I was trying to address right now. I was asking okay, about go ahead. the name, what do you want to address? the the, the Kohler. How do you pronounce the name? Kohler, Kohler. I'm still I don't having. I know you'll have to ask the witness. I'm still having trouble finding the file for for that particular witness. Okay. Um, yeah, call the jury in. <clears throat> oh. So I don't I don't know how I'm supposed to. Mr. Brooks, you were well advised. These are your witnesses that the state made arrangements. 
you knew who was going to be called. I put that on the record yesterday. So of those three, however, whatever order you want, but I'm not moving past those three. I didn't, to say jump any, to others. I didn't say anything about moving past the three. I know that. I, I just set the tone for today that we're going to keep moving. Okay. I simply stated I'm, I'm not ready to ask that witness questions if okay. I can't even find the, uh, I understand, your paperwork. That's, that's fine. You not having your paperwork's on you, not anybody else. So what am I supposed to ask them? I, I can't answer that, sir. You, you know that. That's a rush to judgment. You can't rush me to judgment. <laughs> so he's saying, Mom, I lost my teacher. I lost my homework. So what you, you cannot you cannot grade me if I if I didn't bring my homework and the teacher is like you're supposed to bring your homework. I don't care if you didn't bring it. It's 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 nonsense. He did something wrong and now he wants to stall everyone else to fix that. That's not how it works, my guy. When I'm notifying the court that I cannot find the record. Well you did very find, well yesterday I can't find without the file your files. So I'm saying I that particular witness. You did said you did not have a file for one of the witnesses and you did a that fine was, job from my perspective. So I did what? You did a fine job. I just yeah, want to say they, my assessment, they also you did provided a good job. me with one sheet for that particular uh, witness at that time. Okay. So I'm I just went off the of that three in paragraphs. How you're prepared or not is solely on you, sir. You've had all of this information. Now we're at the end of the third week of trial. These are your witnesses. I presume that you are prepared in whatever way that is. How you're not can I be prepared for, I'm not, so the witness is just supposed to get up there and just, I'm just no, like, I, yeah. I'm not uh, going to have this commentary, okay? I'm done. The jury's coming good. out. Be prepared to call So that's, that's a rush to judgment. That is not a rush to judgment. It is a Again, rush to judgment. It's clearly in. a rush to judgment if I'm telling you that I don't have the no, file. Right. How am I supposed? You're attempting to delay. So no, I'm not. I'm not attempting to delay nothing. You want to come check the boxes yourself? Wow, that's that's just not how you talk to a judge, especially one that you want help for. Like he's asking for help. He's asking for time. He's asking for the state to give him the paper, the the documents for this guy. Just because he didn't prepare at all yesterday, and he doesn't have any right, uh, wrote, wrote down. I don't, I don't know how you say that, but he doesn't have anything prepared. So now he wants help, and now he's yelling. That's not how you get help. You always trying to pull some fast, fast maneuvers, Mr. Brooks. And uh, <laughs> the guy that just tried to sneak calling the state of Wisconsin as a witness. Is talking about fast maneuvers. Miss Judge, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, the jury's coming in. Yeah, Show and they, respect they, to they the deserve jury. to know this too. It's still issues that need to get addressed. We didn't even address everything. Mr. Brooks, <laughs> I addressed all of the issues. No, I you still know. had another one that didn't have nothing to do with nothing we just talked about. All there right. was a whole nother issue that needed to be addressed that I needed to and bring we'll on the record later. to your attention. We'll, we'll address it later. It needs to get addressed now before we go any further because it's, it's an important matter. It doesn't. Just like the subject matter jurisdiction is important. That hasn't been proven on the record. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, just this like is the not rush to the judgment. time for evidence to be presented or arguments to be made by the parties. I can't even the present any evidence. You won't disregard let me put any evidence in the record. All of these statements made by Mr. Brooks at this time. <laughs> did he just, did someone on the, uh, on the night before when he was calling his mom and stuff, did someone tell him to say rush to judgment? I don't remember no I don't remember him talking about it before. So I think I think he just learned this phrase and now he wants to use it as much as he can. All right. That's unfair what the you're doing. The court will address legal matters outside the then presence. Then we need Everyone to address the seated. legal matter that I was trying to get to and before you, you rush everything out. You may call your next out. witness, sir. I'm not calling any witness until I get an answer, Your Honor. You're a public servant. Mr. You're, suppo Brooks. you're supposed to be able to answer simple questions. Mr. Brooks, if I'm saying I have to bring call it to your, your next attention, witness, please. That's the stage. Of that. That's not how it works. She's not supposed to answer anything of you. She can do some stuff, but uh, that the thing that she's saying that's not it. That's yeah. not it. Bring it to your attention, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, I'm really seeking to bring an issue to your attention. I'm telling you to please. I'm asking you to please and stop. I'm asking you because can we, we have the jury present. I'm asking and you. We need to continue with the evidentiary phase of this trial. Call your next I'm witness. I'm asking you to address a legal matter, as you said that those have to be taken up outside of the jury. I will there do that at the next matter. break. There was a legal matter that needed to be addressed 
beforehand I so we do don't it. have to take up time, I will valuable do it at time the next break. afterwards to address something that needs to be addressed now. That way, Mr. the Brooks, court and you yourself for the third are on time, notice. I will address it at the next break. Call your next witness, please. Are you asking me? I'm directing you to call your next witness. Your Honor, I'm, we're not going to move past this. Seeing as how you took an oath to protect the Constitution, I have your oath. I have a copy of your oath right here. The oath that you took, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, I'd like to continue with testimony. To we have witnesses waiting for you. Please call your next witness. The oath that you swore to protect. <sighs> okay, here we go. We're going to go on a rant about the oath of office. It's he, she's saying that because he does, she doesn't answer his ridiculous nonsense questions that she's breaking her oath, which is not how it works. Um, and also, that now that we have, I have it on full screen, we're going to pull this up. All right. On suit was today, uh, on day 12, he, took, he did the same suit as before. So I'm going to take points, the three points that he had yesterday, I'm going to take them off. And I'm also going to uh, remove another point because he has the two buttons on his jacket button up. That's not how it works. So he, gets, he gets a one today. That's the lowest he's been. All right, let's move on. The Constitution, which you are now not doing. Mr. Brooks, so you're going call your next your witness, sworn please. Oath. You're going against your sworn oath. Mr. Brooks, call your next as you, witness. As you, as you notify the jury every time when there's legal matters, we take them out, out uh, outside of their presence. And we're going to take testimony right now. Call your next I witness. I merely seek to put you on notice on the record for something that needs to be brought to your attention and, and to I, the court's attention. And I will address it That's at the That's what next I'm really seeking to do. It's something that shouldn't have to wait because it'll take a valuable time later. At least if I notify you right from the onset, you'll already know what we're looking at. And we can nip it in the bud before everything starts to roll. And Mr. Then Brooks, it gets over, it gets I overlooked. will address it at the next break. If you want to write something down, that's fine and give it to my clerk. I have nothing in writing. Um, I know there's witnesses available and ready to go. Call your next witness. Your Honor, this, uh, your Honor you have to answer this question. That's, you're Mr. making Brooks, a judicial determination. Call your next witness, judgment. please. She's making a judicial determination that she's going to take your nonsense later. She didn't say she was not going to do it. She just says we're going to do this later. Come on. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. There's no rush to judgment. There is yes, a sir. rush to judgment. If you won't address a legal issue that I informed you that I had some legal issues that needed to be addressed before you just run right past that, Your Honor. You're a public Mr. Brooks, servant. Are you not a public servant? It is 9.37. Call it your... It is 8.37. Sorry, 8.37. You're right. Call your next witness. Your Honor. You're rushing me to judgment. There, there's no rush to judgment. Call your next witness, We had please. a legal matter that needed to be addressed, and I'm merely trying to and notify I'm the court. Telling you I'm denying onset. your request to address it at this moment. Call your next witness. You said what? I'm denying your request to address it at this moment. Please how call. Can, how can you please? deny something that we're supposed to do before Mr. the judgment comes out? Call your witness. I'm not, I'm not seeking to be disruptive. I'm <sighs> just seeking to understand why we all we do this everyone every day. is in the courtroom waiting for you please call your, your next Honor, witness we do this every single day we've done it every single day so i'm, I'm simply trying to make sure that the court is notified of put it in writing hand discussed. it to the bailiff and if i deem it important enough to interrupt the witness i will but call your next witness how can i how can i call a witness and write something down and do <laughs> you can both. take a minute this to write how can I do two things at the same time? My guy, he's gonna the witness is gonna take a while to get into the stand. So you call him, they go get it, you write it down, and then you question the witness. There you go. It's not hard. You just have to think for one second. Write down what it is. This I'm not asking you to... why I needed to be addressed beforehand. <laughs> Mr. Brooks, that way the jury is remaining in this courtroom. Call your next witness, please. Your Honor, you're rushing me to judgment. There's no rush to judgment, sir. Are you or are you not a public servant, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, do I not have your oath of, of office? Under 90611, this court has the authority, as you know. Do I not have? Call... Is this not a copy or I asked for certified copies that you said on record that you would not provide for for no good reason. They cost money, my guy. She's not gonna pay for you to have those. These are three, sir. Three of your. You oaths are doing this, right and here. I repeatedly told you you can see the juries here. You're, You're doing, doing this. I, I, 
Listen, I, we now, need to go I'm forward. I'm not attempting. I'm not attempting to delay the proceedings. I'm not attempting to be disruptive. I'm merely trying to notify your honor in the court for the record beforehand. That way, everyone's at least on notice of the issues that need to be taken up instead of waiting until a break or a lunch and, and things of that nature, which kills my valuable discretion, time. It's my authority. It's the courtroom that I'm Your presiding Honor. over. I'm not going to address oh, that. This, at the he took the mask off. He's getting real now. This moment. Is this not your and I'm not going to answer Did you not questions. swear as a public servant that you were protect Mr. the United Brooks, States Constitution? Did you not do that? Witness. Three times. I have all of them. Here. Your oath, Your Honor. As a public servant, and Mr. now you're Brooks, rushing me to judgment there's no when I'm doing judgment. things lawfully by trying to notify you. And no I really, I'm sorry, but I really hate this. I really hate this theatrics that he's doing, like he says. He's he's just showing off to the jury. Like, see how the, how the angle of those, of those papers are? Like, he's doing it so the witness can see the papers and be like, oh, my God, he has the oaths of office. Now we have to believe him that they are mistreating him. Notify no. the court of issues that need to be addressed Mr. Brooks, beforehand. We are in the evidentiary issues. phase of this trial. Your Honor, you're Call your next witness. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. And I object I'm to that. I'm aware of three witnesses I object, who are here. I object Call to one that. of them, please. Your Honor, I object to that. Your objections noted. And, I, and I want a legal reconsideration of your ruling. If not, I, I reject that ruling. <laughs> He's going to his checklist without it, she even saying anything. He's, he, he, he ran, he's running past what she says now. He's just saying, if not, and then if not, and then if not, he's, he's ridiculous. Take exception to that ruling. I understand. I request a legal or a factual basis for your ruling, a written judicial finding of fact and conclusion of law for your ruling. And if not that, an interlocutory declaratory appeal for this matter. And if not, these meetings need to be stayed until this matter is before a adjudicated court of competent jurisdiction because we have not proven jurisdiction in this court as of yet. Subject matter jurisdiction has not even been proven on the record, Your Honor. I don't even know the true nature and cause Mr. of the Brooks, charges against me. I don't even understand that part I of understand it. I haven't your been provided a complaint. I haven't. You have. Your Honor, there's there's so many issues. Mr. Brooks, I'm not we will take. I'm not attempting to, Mr. To, Brooks, to be disrespectful in any way. We I'm need to continue. To delay the proceedings your requests are denied. You are proceeding. Your you Honor, are disrupting. I, I and I'm going to instruct the jury that. at this point to I disregard I and not consider that, any Honor. of what has just happened since you walked in. It should not be held against Mr. Brooks in any way. Um, these are legal issues that this court may or may not need to address but they do not bear in any way on ultimately the issues that these that you as jurors will have to decide. And I'm instructing you uh, on, to disregard uh, what you have just heard and seen. Your Honor, with, with everything that I just said be, part, be made part of the record. It's on the record. I'm telling the jury that it shouldn't affect anything that they're doing in any way. Your Honor, this he still also doesn't understand that everything, everything that comes out of his mouth, it's on the record. Everything. So you don't need to be make, you need to make it part of the record. It already is. With rest, that, it's a rush to judgment. Mr. Brooks. Because, Your Honor, I just showed your oath that you swore to took. You swore, you Mr. did Brooks, this, Your Honor. Please call your next witness. You, you took these oaths of offices. You did, Your Honor, three of them. I understand which, my oath, Which is sir, very, very, very well. commendable that, you know, that you decided to be a public servant in this, in these, in, in these type of matters, Your Honor. I, I, I respect it to the fullest, but also it, you, you have to uphold these oath statements. All right, so, I'm going to have to excuse Honor. the jury since Mr. Brooks uh, is not to, calling his witness. You have we'll to, hopefully you have bring to, you back out shortly. You have to. Shut up. She's honor to, these, <laughs> these, these oath of offices. You have to as a public servant. Yes, I, she's, I, I she's gonna address it, guy. She just, she just, she just dismissed the jury. Shut up. Thank you being a public servant. And this is not to take a shot at you in any way, but these these Mr. issues Brooks, that I have, stop. Please they stop. need to be addressed. Please they shut up. I'm excusing the jury. Can you please stop? Your Honor, this is a rush to judgment. This is a clear. This is a clear bias. Mr. Brooks, you are to stop talking. Are you asking me? 
I'm advising you or you will forfeit your right to be present in this so courtroom for the questioning of your first witness. Because you're holding me in contempt. I'm not holding you in contempt. Then how can you remove me from uh, the uh, courtroom when I haven't given consent? Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you at this moment to call your next witness or you will forfeit the right to call these witnesses. You can't, you can't uh, take Under 906.11, right? you, you are cannot, refusing you cannot, to you call cannot, a witness. I didn't refuse anything, Your Honor. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I didn't refuse anything, but I'm not doing it anyway. Deny me my Sixth Amendment right, which is Mr. to Brooks, call witnesses. Mr. Brooks, do you want to be present in which this is courtroom while you question your first witness? Because it is now 844, and you've consistently talked in front of the jury who's no longer in this courtroom on issues that you have been advised and are fully aware are not relevant to their determination despite what you this, believe the law this didn't have anything is. To do with the Subject jury, matter right? jurist no you that's what that is what you referenced in front of the jury and then you referenced my oh, the issues that I was subject matter raise. jurisdiction as you know is not as something I don't know the state has to be the state it must has to prove be proven. it has to be and you are frankly confusing law law. civil Show me jurisdiction law law, in Honor. federal cases with criminal court jurisdiction in no. the state of Wisconsin. You don't have criminal. That you has don't been made have, abundantly clear. You don't clear. have subject matter jurisdiction or personal jurisdiction. Mr. Brooks. Or personal jurisdiction. You don't. You haven't proven. You have not. You I, I excuse the, the jury. I'll give you the opportunity to raise whatever issue mm. it was, but you need to do it now or we're moving forward. That's what I want to do. And do That's it. That's what I was attempting to do. And if you interrupt me one more time, you're going to go do it from the other courtroom. And, and because so you're, you're holding being me in contempt. All right. I'm, he can go to the other courtroom. Thank and you. We will address these issues because are you, you are not being respectful. You are disruptive. You are interrupting. I will give you one more opportunity. Don't interrupt me again. Don't roll your eyes at me. Don't sigh at me. You see this guy? You see, I, I hate this look. I really, I, I truly, I don't know how an adult can make this look. You're 40 years old, my guy, and you're doing this face to someone, to another adult, to another person. This is not, I don't get it. Like, you guys are seeing this. Like, look at, look at this guy. Look at, look at the way that he's looking up to the ceiling. This little thing that he's doing with his mouth. I don't get it. You're supposed to be serious and you're playing right now. <sighs> you have delayed these proceedings now by 15 minutes because of your nonstop commentary. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to listen to you. What issue do you want to raise, sir? So are you letting me uh, make an offer of proof for my appeal? No. Why would you need an offer of proof for your appeal, my guy? You haven't been convicted. An appeal only works if you're found guilty. Or I guess, can you appeal if you're innocent? I don't, I don't think that would work, but can you appeal the decision of they finding you innocent? I, I, if, if I have any lawyers in the chat, let me know. Uh, but now, let's see. He did all that. He spent like 15 minutes, 20 minutes talking about something really important that couldn't wait for another break. Let's see what he says. No, because that's not what's relevant at this time, sir. If you, you don't need to make an offer of proof. Tell me what the issue is. You okay. said you have a legal issue you want to raise before we get going. What is that issue? Okay. The legal issue is this. Uh, Detective Casey yesterday testified for the second time under oath in uh, reference to exhibits 13 and 14 that showed the backyard of my mother's home, which he stated that he had been to the home, had seen the backyard, and all this stuff, Yeah. when he did not, in fact, even speak with my mother. It was brought to my attention that my mother, in fact, never speak to, spoke to any law enforcement from Waukesha. Would you like to add her to your witness list to call her? Yes, I would. All right, that's because fine. She's that's willing, how we'll she's willing that. to come. But that's not something we needed to address this right away, It needs right to away, be addressed sir. because because of the issue of the subpoena. That's the So all all this drama was because her his mom told him that she didn't speak to any law officer from Waukesha. And I don't think that's true. 
Like, I don't think Detective Casey was going to go up in the stand and lie about that. So, and she also did speak with officers because she gave them the videos of the ring camera. So I don't think Don Woods is telling him the truth. Or maybe he's misunderstanding what, he's, what she said. Because I think in, in his phone call, he was like, Mom, what? Why would you give them the videos? Why would you talk to the police? And his mom was like, no, I didn't do it. I didn't say that. I didn't talk with any officer. And now he's mad about it. The reason why I needed to be addressed, that's the reason why I was trying to attempt to it bring it to It could have been done attention. on a break. All right, so what I be, you're putting, I have, you, you would like, you're asking me to add Don Woods to the witness list for you. Yes, but okay. I also have a question of, about the subpoena. The subpoena for whom? For, for my mother. But I would also like to subpoena the phone records so it can be made part of the record of the conversation since the prosecution listens to all the phone calls. They should be able to have heard that phone call as well. So they should be on notice of what was said. I don't know what phone call you're referring to. If I'm you're referring, referring to, to a, a jail call phone from, call, I'm referring then... to a jail phone call that was made last night. October 20th, between 7.54 p.m. and 8.10 p.m. I would love to have uh, access to those phone calls. Please, please, Waukesha County, let me have them. I will, I, will de I will put good use for them. Which I'm sure the prosecution has heard by now. And that also brings up the issue of perjury testimony. Sir, the... the... The way that you will address the issues that you're talking about are to call witnesses to challenge that or to present the evidence in support of your position. If you're telling me you need to add Dawn Woods to the witness list, I approve of that. Um, you can fill out a subpoena and I'll direct the state to serve that upon her and at the appropriate time we'll have her brought, we'll indicate when in the order of folks she can be brought in. So I'll grant that request. In terms to... of the jail records, uh, you'll have to subpoena the appropriate custodian or a witness who can testify to that. That's that's what I was trying to gain knowledge of. Well, I, don't, I can't I don't, give you advice on that. I'm sir. not trying to ask for advice. I was is the, is can I, is that that's legal asking me? To... <laughs> I'm not asking for any advice, but can you advise me if I can do this? Subpoena. For... I can't direct how you do that. I can't tell you how to do that. Um, you are acting as your own attorney, and you uh, will need to figure that out. So, you have the subpoena forms. Um, you can research the issues. You have access to legal research materials and other things, uh, and that's how you'll have to address I that. I accept for value in return for value this document. Was that a subpoena form? Thank you. Is there any other witnesses you're asking to add to your... Uh, and, and you can also call Detective Casey if you want, just so you know. So that make three times he's able to testify? If you believe he has information that he hasn't testified to, I will give you permission to call him as well. No, I don't think it'd be necessary. You know, you know, you know what he did. Well, in any event. And you know what he um, didn't do. We're going to bring the jury back out. So, so she's giving you the opportunity to cast doubt into the jury by saying that Detective Casey lied. You are giving that opportunity. You know that. If, if what you're saying is true and he lied about it, you can strike a lot of stuff that he said. Because now the, the, the jury is going to see him as a liar. But you don't want to do that? How? And then I expect you to call a witness. And, what, and just so I'm clear, because I was trying to get to that issue, what witnesses are here? Because I... I they just said that at the beginning. Erica Patterson, Detective Good, and Mr. The other guy, the, 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 the guy that he can file the paperwork. They, he, they just said that. I don't have the, uh, I don't have any, any paperwork for uh, Kohler. Kohler, Kohler, Kohler. Kohler. I don't know. Douglas Kohler, that. Stephen Guth, and Erica Patterson. Of those three, you, I They said to this before. I set for value in return for value this document they gave him the the, the color file anyway
he's claiming he does not have it. Since I, I know that I don't have it. So let's make that record correct. You don't have it with you in the courtroom is what you're saying. I can't find it anywhere. You've had it previously. Yes, I had it at one point. All right. So? Are you ready to proceed forward, Mr. Brooks? Yes. All right, let's bring the jury out. So that was pointless. All right, that, that whole legal, I mean, I, the, the face on this guy is my face that I would make if I was, I was there. It's like, oof, finally, we have moving somewhere. Jesus. <laughs> the defense call. You guys saw that look. Boss <laughs> Douglas J. Kohler. Uh, good morning, Mr. Co is it Kolar? Kolar. Kolar. Good morning, Mr. Kolar. I want to direct your attention to November. Okay. I'm sorry. I know you guys hate, some of you guys hate this, but do you see this? The way that his jacket pops up? This is the reason why you don't button these things when you are standing up. 1st of 2021. Uh, see how bad that looks? That's why you don't do it. Do you call that evening pretty well? Fairly well, yes. Well, let me back up for a minute. First of all, what do you do for a living? I'm an IT director for a law firm. Hey, IT Been director. Doing that for a long time? Uh, I do that. I've been in IT for over 20 years. Uh, yeah, that is a long time. Directing your attention back to the night of November, uh, evening of November 21st, 2021. What did you do that day? Well, that day, I was preparing my daughter to march in the parade with her dance troupe. Uh, got her dressed, and uh, we had to change our plans last minute because my son was not feeling well. So it was just my daughter and I that went to the parade. And at, at some point, you observed something happening. Would that be fair to say? That's fair. Yes. Uh, do you recall what that was? Well, after my daughter had finished, I noticed a vehicle coming through where the parade participants were going. It was a red vehicle. It was honking its horn. A police officer attempted to approach the vehicle. Uh, that police officer had reached for the door handle <coughs> and at the time of that approach the vehicle started to speed off <coughs> you stay how is this testimony good for you he didn't say anything that's gonna i i mean just because he heard the honking that's that's it he's not helping you it, that you heard the vehicle honking his horn while it was on White Rock Avenue, it was honking its horn. In your opinion, did the vehicle appear to appear to try to avoid hitting people? At that point, yes. And you made reference to it coming in the vehicle coming in contact with an officer. Did you see? Where the vehicle went after that uh, interaction with the officer? The officer attempted to make contact. But after that attempt, the vehicle sped southward. Did you notice the vehicle strike anyone at that time? I did not. And what did you do after you saw the vehicle? Once, once it, it was out of your view. Once it was out of my view, I grabbed my daughter and walked as fast as I could to my car. Do you recall if the vehicle had uh, any tinted windows? I believe the rear windows were tinted like most SUVs are. Oh. So it'd be fair to say that you were subpoenaed to testify at some point. 
<laughs> oh my god, he ran out of questions. That's it. I don't get why he called this guy. He just didn't he didn't present anything to him. Yes. Do you recall whom you received that subpoena from? The Waukesha County Sheriff. Or Do you one recall? of the sheriffs. I'm sorry. I mean... or, or one of the sheriffs. Oh. Uh, were you or your daughter injured in any way during this uh, incident? No, we were not. Uh, no further questions. At That's this it? <laughs> That's his witness? There's no point of... There was zero point of his testimony. It didn't help him one bit. Why would you call him? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Cole. Good morning. Thank you for being here. To be clear, sir, the subpoena you received was issued on behalf of the defendant, Daryl Brooks, correct? I don't know. Not, it, that information was not filled out on the subpoena. Okay. You did um, provide a typed statement to the Waukesha Police Department, correct? Objection, Lee. And, sorry, oh, if there's an objection, let me rule on it first before you answer. Overrule, uh, go ahead. And his answer, I believe he answered it, but if not, <coughs> Did you answer it? Uh, I'll ask again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You did provide a written uh, statement to the police department, correct, sir? Objection leading. Overrule. It's cross. And in that statement, you described the SUV as driving erratically down White Rock Avenue, correct? Objection. Didn't testify to that. But it's in his report that you probably didn't read. So she can question him about it. Um, that was asked and answered. Overall, yes, just the event that of driving past some participants on the right and then veering to pass the next group on the left. Okay. You said at that point, the when it, the vehicle was on White Rock, it was honking its horn, correct? Correct. Correct. There was no objection. You can answer. And you got a look at the driver of the car, correct, sir? Objection, speculative. Um, overrule. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. And you described the driver in your written statement as a black male with dark dreadlocks and visible tattoos. Is that correct, sir? Objection, leading. Overrule. It's cross. She can lead. The witness may answer. Yes. Is that consistent with your memory, sir? Objection speculative. Overrule. That is consistent with my memory today. <clears throat> Once the uh, vehicle went past the officer, you indicated that you saw it accelerate or speed off. Is that correct, sir? Objection leading. Overrule. 906-11 sub 3. Yes, at that point, it sped away. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Any redirect? Briefly. Go ahead. Referring to the written statement that was just testified to, uh, to the best of your recollection, do you recall stating that the SUV was a an uh, older model red Chevy Blazer? At the time of, of that, the, the day of the parade, I, I just remembered the red SUV. What assumption would lead you to, to, to describe the vehicle as a Chevy Blazer? I believe in my assumption it was just to say it was a older boxy style SUV and in my mind that relates closely to a Chevy Blazer. Uh, no further questions. All right, thank you. Anyways. Yeah, I look it up in my other screen. It it kind of looks like a Chevy Blazer. I mean, it's a red SUV. They kind of look alike. No. 
And you also are excused. Thank you for being here. You may call your next witness. One second. All right. We're going to stop it here. Um, we're going to come back next episode. I think the next uh, witness should be Detective Good. So the, the, the next episode, I'm going to try to 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 cover all of that. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.